some people think it's for students who don't do well in school um, or with you know lower level GCSE qualifications and um, that isn't true um, it, it is false and it you do need to be able to keep up with that pace and that level of workload <laughs> Welcome to our first episode of the College Group Chat, the go-to podcast for future and current college students. My name's Megan. And my name's Eleanor. And as it's National Apprenticeship Week this week, we're going to be answering and explaining all your questions about apprenticeships. With it being National Apprenticeship Week this week, we've been going around college asking our current students anything they'd like to know about apprenticeships. Um, and we've also been asking our year 11s and year 10s in the local area um, anything that they would like to know, any questions they have about apprenticeships. So would you mind, Megan, just explaining a little bit more about what apprenticeships actually are for those people who might not know? Yeah, of course. So apprenticeships are an alternative type of qualification to your traditional A-levels, technical courses, T-levels and your B-techs. Um, and they offer students the opportunity to gain a nationally recognised qualification, but also gain valuable um, experience in the workplace with an employer that they're actually employed full time by as well. And they can gain a um, wage whilst they're gaining the qualification as well, which is one huge advantage of being a, an apprentice. Yeah, that's really interesting. And what kind of apprenticeships do we have, you know, at the college? So at Warrington Vale Royal College, we offer nearly 20 different subject areas for apprenticeships. So you can choose from anything like business administration, customer services, then you've got all your construction trades, engineering, motor vehicle, hairdressing, health, early years, HR, digital marketing, there's literally so <laughs> many different opportunities. Um, so yeah, anyone who's kind of interested in exploring all of those different kind of programs, I'd encourage them to come along to our open evenings. And um, we also do a number of apprenticeships explained events as well um, with our apprenticeships team as well um, and they can learn more about those individual courses um, and what they kind of entail and um, how they're assessed um, and what employers that we work with as well at the college. Yeah see that's the big key thing isn't it about employers. So it's, it's quite interesting really isn't it the way it works with our college we work with over 500 employers don't yeah. we so some really high profile names like the NHS and um, Bloor Homes and um, KDE, some really high profile employers. But then we also work with your smaller companies as well. So really ranging from, um, as you say, those uh, level two qualifications all the way up to those level fives in all those different areas for multiple different companies. So, you know, it doesn't really limit you in, in which way you'd like to go with the apprenticeship. Or yeah, and absolutely. And that just shows the kind of display of the amount of different people that apprenticeships do cater for as well. And, um, you know, we have the level two right up to the level five in so many different areas. So there really is something for everyone. Um, and it's a completely different learning style at school and also your full time college studies. You're very used to being in college you know or in school five days a week when you come to college you know intense full days maybe only picking up part-time work outside your studies mm -hmm. and for some students that's perfect that's what they want to do um and they're not kind of ready to enter the workplace straight away mm -hmm. but for a lot of people especially more young people now than ever before are interested in apprenticeships when they're leaving school those students that you know really want to get straight into work are more hands-on practical learners and they really thrive at being in a workplace environment and um, so it's really important that we have courses that allow students to really showcase what they're good at um, and gain a really solid qualification but perform really well at it because mm -hmm. they're doing it in a mode that really suits them. Mm -hmm. I think that's definitely really interesting and then the other key thing I think about the apprenticeships as well is that they're not just I think the big stereotype about apprenticeships is that they are just for 16 year olds coming out of school mm -hmm. uh, whereas that's not the case anyone of any age of any background of any sort of anything like that can do an apprenticeship can start an apprenticeship in all of those different areas as well so I think that's a key thing to take away from that as well absolutely and it's actually really interesting because it's when we look at how many students we have as currently enrolled as an apprentice with us, the figures are higher for your adult students than they are your 16 year olds or your school leavers. So it's really, really interesting to show that, you know, it's not just a course for 16 year olds or, you know, students leaving school or people who are even leaving college. We have apprentices, you know, join us at the age of 30. Mm -hmm. We have apprentices whose employer want to help them upskill. So they will put them on an apprenticeship course um, and do it that way, but they'll be on a higher level apprenticeship, like a level five CIPD qualification. Um, so 
it really does range. Um, and I think, again, like you say, that's a, a real big stereotype or myth that surrounds apprenticeships and um, those types of courses. Mm -hmm. And should we talk a little bit about some of those myths that come around with apprenticeships? You know, that yeah. that's not the only myth that there is with apprenticeships, really. There's so many myths that necessarily aren't true. Yeah, and, and, we, and we see them all the time mm -hmm. in schools. Um, a large part of our role is going into schools. We work in the school engagement team. So we work with around 50 local secondary schools and we go in and support students in exploring their options, what courses are open to them and um, when they leave school. And in those conversations and engagements that we have with students, there, there, there are a lot of myths and stereotypes that come up in those conversations sure. that we have to kind of debunk a little bit yeah. so yeah it is really interesting yeah so should we talk about one of those myths in specifically so some people think that apprentices you know there's not a really good wage that comes with apprenticeship so we know that that's not completely true and mm -hmm. um, apprentices are paid the national minimum wage yeah. with the apprenticeships and you know you are gaining I think a lot of people think with the apprenticeships and um, you know they are poorly paid but necessarily that's completely false and, and I think another stereotype with, with apprenticeships as well is that they are for those lower level students, mm -hmm. those students who maybe didn't do so well in school and again that's just completely false. As Megan mentioned before and um, it's really based on your learning style and what kind of way you learn if you like being more practical, more hands-on and I think that's a really important key factor when you're thinking about your options after school. Yeah, definitely. And also it's a bit of a head start into the industry. So if you are, you know that when you leave school, for example, you want to be an electrician or you know that you definitely want to become a digital marketer um, or multi-channel marketer, um, then you, you can follow that direct career path. So it's really, really focused on that one route, um, which doesn't suit everyone. But for those students that are really set on a career and know that's what they want to do, it can often be a step in. And after two years time, say, you would be maybe ahead of someone who's gone to college and studied full time, mm -hmm. a range of different subjects, uh, maybe at A-level, um, because you'll have a head start in the industry. You'll have a really good recommendation for an employer from an employer mm -hmm. um, and it'll look great on your CV. Um, I know with ourselves over 90% of our apprentices are kept on after they complete their qualification so they're kept on and often given a promotion as well so if you compare yourself to someone who's maybe just left school or just left college sorry um, and is then applying for a job mm -hmm. compared to someone who's had two years in that industry and also got a qualification you're going to come out top on that pile. Um, so it is really, really a, a good qualification style for those students that have their hearts set on a specific route. Mm -hmm. And speaking on that as well, just based on some of the things you've said there, you know, should we dive a little bit more deep into some of the skills and some of the qualities that are really important as an apprentice? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so should we start, what do you think maybe are some skills and some qualities that you should have if you are looking at applying for an apprenticeship? or if you are even you know, looking to go to college in general as well? Yeah, so I'd say organisation for me is a real biggie. Um, so with an apprenticeship, you are managing being in full-time work, you're also coming to college perhaps one day a week um, or, you know, and also then completing studies outside of both your full-time job and also your day at college. So it can be quite an intense programme for some students. Um, so it's really, Again, following on from that stereotype that you mentioned earlier, that some people think it's for students who don't do well in school um, or with you know lower level GCSE qualifications, and um, that isn't true. Um, it, it is false, and it you do need to be able to keep up with that pace and that level of workload, um, and show that dedication and commitment to your learning, and um, not only to us as a college, but also to your employer yeah. who are paying for for your qualification but also um, your wages and they're investing a lot of time in you and you're mm -hmm. getting really good experience you know some that other might other people might never get the chance to get and um, so I think it's really important to to notice that you're in a really advantageous position to be able to learn from someone who's potentially been doing that job for years um, and inherit all of their skills and their knowledge as well so yeah organization and dedication for me are kind of my top two mm -hmm. definitely so I think for for me, one of the big key skills that are really important to have as an apprentice is your ability to be a reliable person to work with and to work for. You really want to put in that good impression and, um, you know, in those, in your, during your time of your apprenticeship, you really want to put off 
a good impression, making sure that once you complete that apprenticeship, you know, they want to take you on as mm -hmm. a full-time employment. And I think another really key part of um, another key skill to have is your sort of communication, your ability to work, you know, as part of a team, because that's going to be really important and um, working with a company and working for that employer, but then also the ability to work independently. Yeah, I completely agree. I think no matter what job you are doing in any walk of life, mm -hmm. you will always at some point in your role have to work as part of a team. And that's something we tell all of our students who are full-time students with us here um, and aren't on an apprenticeship. Um, and that's how and we help them do team projects, live briefs and, and work together as a team to really prepare them for the workplace. Mm -hmm. So when you are already doing that as part of your apprenticeship programme, it's really, really good um, because you're in it. Um, but then also, as you say, at, with an apprenticeship, you're very much going to be responsible for your own learning and um, have to manage your own time independently mm -hmm. um, and do tasks on your own and use your initiative so yeah I completely agree with all those as well. So one of the questions that we've been asked so many times is what are the entry requirements for apprenticeships um, and I think this would be really good for um, both the school leavers and for them to find out what the entry requirements are but also as we said before you know apprenticeships aren't just for school leavers so it's general good and useful information for anyone who wants to know a little bit more about those entry requirements. So um, anyone who's interested in apprenticeship, we'd always encourage them to get in touch with our apprenticeships team. Um, and that's because the entry requirements do vary depending on which course you're interested in studying. Um, and also employers can set their own entry requirements. So some employers, for example, for engineering courses, they will ask students to also have like maths, English, as well as science. Um, but science isn't a requirement of all courses. So it they really do vary dependent on course type, level and also with the employer. For that reason, that's why we say get in touch with the apprenticeship team and they'll be able to talk you through exactly what you need and what you need to aim for um, to get onto that course when you're leaving school um, or if you've already got your qualifications, what you're eligible to go on to now. So thank you so much for listening to our first episode of the College Group Chat and stay tuned for our next episode soon.